And there's increasing pressure for Australia to boost its military presence in the Middle East. Security experts are calling on Prime Minister Anthony Albanese to step up support for AUKUS partners amid fears militant groups in the Middle East could launch retaliatory attacks. Foreign Minister Penny Wong is set to visit the region on Monday and will visit Israeli and Palestinian Authority leaders in the West Bank Territory. Well, joining me live now is former minister in the Howard government and Bondi Partners, senior advisor Peter McGoran. Thank you very much for joining us. A lot to talk about here. First of all, Penny Wong's visit to Israel and other areas. How significant is this? It's certainly taken on greater significance mm. uh, given the uh, counter attacks by the Allied forces last night against the Houthi rebels to degrade their missile and drone launching sites and also to destroy much of their ammunition. And Australia, via uh, 11 personnel, six new ones based in Bahrain, have contributed to that, obviously in a logistical or uh, intelligence way, no hardware or weaponry. So uh, it's, it's Australia has now got skin in the game. Do you think we needed to provide more artillery, more warships? Yes, definitely. I don't know that we've got the capability in all honesty, and that says something about our naval capacities, because we... The, the, there's no evidence that any of our warships have a counter drone capacity and you cannot enter that theatre of war unless you are able to repel drones and missiles. Uh, but we are committed to international shipping lanes, freedom of uh, movement and we, this is one of the arguments we use against China trying to take control of the shipping lanes or have the capability of doing so in the future in the South China Sea. So we should be supporting the principle even if it is in the Red Sea. The International Court of Justice, Israel's denying that it has been carrying out genocide of Palestinians in Gaza. What do you think the outcome is going to be? It's hard to say because the International Court of Justice is uh, semi-political, at least. Um, I don't think that they can find under international law that Israel is engaging in genocide. It doesn't meet the definition of a targeted of, of, a, of a race or a collective of people. There is terrible suffering as a result of this conflict in Gaza and innocent people are losing their lives. But it is a defensive uh, manoeuvre by Israel following October 7. Let's turn to another topic and November CPI fell to 4.3%. So does this mean that the Reserve Bank will not increase the interest rates for next uh, next few months? Yes, the, like the Reserve it. Bank meets mm. again on the 3rd of February, Janie. Um, it's likely that the dial has shifted in favour of uh, keeping interest rates at the current level. But remember, 4.3% inflation rate is a lower number. It's not a low number. I, th I think what it means is the trend's in the right direction and it foreshadows potential interest rate reductions in the second half of the year. All right. And uh, what about coals and woolies are subject to price gouging? We're seeing uh, prices like meat dropping 20% this week. Um, what do you think about the inquiry and what are we going to find here? Nothing new will come out of the mm. inquiry that isn't already known. Because remember, we've got the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, the ACCC, which has all the powers in the world. Uh, but it's a good diversion for the government away from the cost of living issues. And it will morally shame the supermarkets, as, as, you, as you suggest. Coles has already reduced its uh, meat, uh, uh, beef and lamb prices by 20%. How's that for an own goal? So, look, it's good theatre... Uh, I don't think anything in a legal sense will come out of it, but it will hold them to account the way we like to hold electricity companies and gas suppliers and banks and financial institutions to account. So there might be more transparency, possibly. But again, where's the ACCC? Mm. No Australia Day merchandise will be sold at Woolworths and now Aldi. Um, more than 60 councils not holding citizenship ceremonies for Australia Day. Your thoughts? Do you think that is what we should be doing? Well, this is the annual controversy of Australia Day, the 26th of January, uh, celebrating the landing by Arthur Phillip, Sydney Cove, 26th of January, 1788. Look, it, for many in the Indigenous community, it's Invasion Day. There are others in the community who support that point of view. But they are a minority. A majority of Australians are just going to go about Australia Day as they always do and celebrate it in a uniquely Australian way. And nobody should be interrupting that right. Um, look, 
P Peter Dutton's called for a boycott of Woolworths. Um, obviously, that's not in the interest of the 200,000 Australians who work for Wo Woolworths. It might have a, a bit of a sugar hit, but it won't be sustained. But Peter Dutton's uh, a deliberative politician, Janie. He, he never says anything off the top of his head or unprepared. So for him to call for a boycott of Woolworths, knowing that it's an economic nonsense and, and, and won't change things, at least not permanently, means he believes, either by way of political judgment or by way of research, that Australians have had enough of minorities or uh, criticism of their long-held traditions and beliefs. So I thought that was the most interesting thing about the call to boycott Woolworths, whose actions is shameful, of course. A big year ahead, Peter McGoran, for 2024. We've got the Iowa caucuses coming up, the presidential election. We've got <laughs> here in Australia the stage three tax cuts, the cost of living crisis. So the list will go on. Correct. What are some of the main things that you're going to be looking out for? Look, I think you've touched on them all. The American election is going to be a cut, uh, a major sway through our political and uh, discussions, no question. Indeed, half the world of population goes to elections next year. Now, Many of them are not very free or open or transparent elections, but, yeah, and, of course, the regional wars in Ukraine and the Middle East and this latest conflict in Yemen just shows you how things can escalate. Um, so it's hard to predict uh, the unpredictable. Just before we let you go, what are your concerns about the current situation in the Middle East? Are you concerned of increased escalations? We've got to keep an eye on certain areas, including Iran. What do you think they're going to do? Um, the biggest threat to escalation mm. is Hezbollah mm -hmm. entering Israel from the north. Um, because remember, is Israel is battling the West Bank, Gaza, Iraq, Syria, uh, Lebanon, Yemen and Iran. And all of them are largely controlled by Iran. So Iran will is pulling the strings. They will decide to what level they go. They probably There's a hope they won't go much further in taunting the West and Israel, because then they just degrade their own assets. They've lost a mass. Do they really want to lose Hezbollah? Do they really want to lose the Houthis in Yemen? For, for what purpose? But again, it, uh, they, because they've taken a blood vow, uh, in effect, to destroy Israel, you can't be certain what Iran will do. We're not hearing a huge amount about the hostages taken by oh, Hamas tragic. since October 7 in the last week or so. Yeah. Are you agreeing with that? Yeah, it's it's tragic. Mm. There's a possibility that the, the majority of them are uh, with the Hamas remaining leadership to try to use them perhaps as a bargaining chip for their own lives. That's the best hope that their families have. Mm. Peter McGowan, great to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Janie.